virtual Dolby surround technology. The sound that surrounds you. Thompson. You're looking at a picture of the White House uh, less than a week before Christmas. You can see the holiday decorations, uh, but uh, to put it mildly, there, there's hardly a spirit or, or a mood of celebration today, quite the opposite. Uh, on this day, just within the last few hours, the House of Representatives has passed two articles of impeachment against President Clinton. Sitting with the President right now in the residence part of the White House are members of the Democratic leadership and other Democrats in the House who have come there to talk to the President uh, after they meet for a period of time. We don't know how long that will be. We're told they're going to go out into the Rose Garden and uh, the President will have something to say publicly uh, by way of reaction. CNN's Wolf Blitzer uh, is, is there. Wolf, uh, uh, is this a day when the White House is fully staffed? Yes, the, everybody is here today. Uh, the, all of the president's top advisors, all the president's top staff, they're, they're here. They uh, are very sad, obviously, by what has occurred. But one uh, legal question uh, some of the White House lawyers, at least, had thought about raising, and it's unclear whether they would go forward with this. Remember, Professor Bruce Ackerman of Yale Law School during the testimony said that what this 105th uh, House of Representatives does, this lame duck house, is not necessarily going to be binding on the 106th uh, uh, Congress which convenes in, in January. And, and some of the president's legal advisors thought, well, maybe it's a good idea to test this whole impeachment uh, resolution right now to see if it is constitutional for this, uh, these two articles of impeachment to go forward and be considered by the 106th. For the White House to do that directly might raise legalistic problems that this president is trying to skirt what, uh, what the, the Congress has already done. But perhaps others might ra raise those legal questions now, and that could uh, throw some sort of monkey wrench into this whole process. Wolf, are you getting at the fact that one of these articles, uh, Article 3, uh, charging alleging obstruction of justice, passed by just, uh, let's see here, by my count, just two votes more than was needed? Well, very close. The first article passed by a, a considerable number, uh, but... Uh, it was 228 to 206 was Article 1. Article 3, 220 to 212, right. and with a vote, with a shift of, uh, what, four or five votes... It might, the, the next Congress might not go forward. Remember, there are some 40 uh, members of the House of Representatives who, were, who voted today who were lame duck members and, and will not be coming back in the next session. So it's uh, technically, if, if that Bruce Ackerman proposal uh, were, to, uh, were to be upheld, uh, there would have to be a, another vote in the House of Representatives. But it's, at this point, there's no indication the White House directly is going to pursue that. When, when Charles Ruff and other White House officials were asked about why they called Bruce Ackerman to testify on behalf of the president. They said, look, he, he has the right to make his own judgments. We're not taking a position on whether his view of the Constitution is necessarily accurate. And of course, several other constitutional scholars totally disagree with him. Bob Franken at the Capitol, I think, uh, to put it mildly, the Republican leadership of the House wouldn't take kindly to such a such a move on the part of the Democrats or the White House? Well, as a matter of fact, it would raise some real separation of powers questions about the ability of the Supreme Court to stop a congressional function. Beyond that, however, there is one opportunity everybody agrees to uh, have to revalidate what the House of Representatives did. Uh, Jeff pointed this out earlier. The managers, who we've just seen presenting the uh, articles of impeachment to the Secretary of the Senate, must be reappointed by the new House of Representatives. Now, it's going to be a much closer Republican margin there, and it's entirely possible that there could be some political changes between now and then which could affect things. If they're not reappointed, then in effect impeachment is blocked because if there are no prosecutors, there is no trial. So all of that is going on. Uh, there's going to be a period of time, however, assuming that the trial goes forward, which is what uh, Jeff described as a pretrial. That's when the president gets to respond. That's when the House of Representatives responds to him. That is a period of time in just about any trial when oftentimes plea bargains are made. I can tell you that uh, very quietly in the last couple of weeks there have been back channel discussions among people not necessarily in the White House but some of the party elders in towns from both parties trying to create some sort of deal that might be acceptable to everybody. So already there are talks about this, very delicate, nobody wants to go public about it, but they are underway. 
Bob Franken as a backdrop to all this. The Republicans, especially those in the House, are scurrying now. Oh boy, are they scurrying because they've suddenly lost uh, their second speaker since the election. Of course, you remember Newt Gingrich decided that he would call it quits. Then came Bob Livingston. This has been the week where some of his extramarital uh, affairs were exposed. At least uh, the fact that he'd had them was. He decided a couple of days after that, and he did it, just dropped a bombshell, uh, decided that he would in fact leave. Surprised everybody. He's not going to stand for speaker, he said. In fact, he's leaving Congress. We are being told that the Republicans ordered to quickly end and the disarray to get things back together have already sort of coalesced around one person, a man named Dennis Hastert, and that's one of those people you'd say, Dennis who? He has not been a prominent national figure, but he has been somebody within the Republican Party who has been very, very popular. He's both conservative, but appeals to moderates. He was, he is a deputy whip, and both uh, Speaker Gingrich's remaining operation, and probably more importantly, uh, Tom DeLay, who's the whip, are organizing an effort to get him elected as the Speaker nominee very quickly, perhaps as soon as Monday, if they can get the new members of of Congress and everybody back to town during that Christmas week. Jeff Greenfield, we've talked a lot about what people here in official Washington are saying and thinking, but I'm anxious to find out over these next immediate few days what American citizens across this great land are thinking and what their impressions are of what has happened in this capital today. I think in some ways that may be the single most important question that, that uh, we need to find out. All along we've been hearing, uh, well, uh, w the closer this gets to reality, at some point the majority of Americans who have consistently opposed impeachment will make their voices heard. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking with you folks about a week ago and speculating what if the president were actually impeached and the reaction of the public was the same overwhelming indifference. If they didn't take it seriously, they thought he wouldn't be convicted. It's the weekend before Christmas. I've got a lot of other things to think about. And who cares about Washington and politics anyway? For us, the headlines tomorrow are literally historical, amazing. I wonder if for most Americans it's, oh, now what am I going to get my uh, sister-in-law for Christmas? Uh, uh, we have no idea whether the president's strategy of, of now trying to rally the troops is going to produce a tremendous outpouring of anger at the Republicans, whether in fact the actual fact of impeachment will further endanger the president by making it seem more weighty, or whether the public's going to say, uh, you know, I just don't care that much. Or whether indeed in the fullness of time the resiliency of this great country carries through without a shot being fired and the Republic survives and life goes on. That I would bet on big time. <laughs> that's the one thing I think you know you can be pretty confident about given what we've been through. That's that's the reality mm -hmm. uh, that we can be we can take a lot of assurance from. Knock on wood. All right. right now the president is just beginning a meeting I'm told Bernie with uh, members of the house. Originally we were told it was in the residence. Now we're told it's in the East Room which is a pretty big you know, I wondered formal how get... part of the uh, public part of the White House, if I you I wonder will. how they would get two busloads of people. Congress people <laughs> in the second floor residence of the White House. Not that large. Now we know. And uh, that afterwards uh, uh, they are going to step out onto the south grounds of the White House uh, just outside the Oval Office and that that's where they will, will, uh, will make uh, statements. Certainly the President will make a statement. We don't know how many of the Democrats will also be talking. There has been uh, other news happening on this, uh, on this day. Can I interrupt you? ever so gently. Please do. We can't uh, go right to what we wanted to go to next. Uh, we are going to be reporting on other things that have been happening in the, in the country, but we just won't do that right now. The most important thing for us right now here in Washington is to await President Clinton as he comes out of the White House. We're going to do that. We're going to pause, and when we'll come back, we'll have more coverage of this. It indeed is a historic day.